Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Andrew and Connor from Team Blacktop YGO coming at you today with a... What do we got, Connor? We have a Thunder Dragon Chaos deck profile. That's right. This deck won first place at a local tournament uh, last Saturday, and uh, we just got done working out, so um, what better time to do deck profile than this, Connor? So why don't you go ahead and just take it away for us? Alrighty. Well, I've always really liked this deck, even though it's not... I wouldn't say it's meta, but it's a very good road deck, in my opinion, and the things that I got to play against there, which were meta, such as Trivergate or Invoke Shadal and all sorts of things, and this deck did very well against almost every matchup it had, so I'll just get right into it. Uh, you have your starter card, you play three Aloof Lupine. I originally played Aloof Lupine and Batterman Solar, but I ended up liking this a lot better because it really pops off your Thunder plays, and then you can also uh, use it to recycle things from your Banish deck, and you can also... Uh, use it later uh, with cards like the Chaos Engine. So I really like that as a starter. And it gives you a third type, other than Thunder or Dragon, which will come in very handy later. And then I play the Thunder Dragon package, which you need three Thunder Dragons. I mean, I could probably count on 50 hands the amount of times I said Thunder Dragon and Thunder Dragon on Saturday. You play three Dark. You play three Roar. You play two Matrix. I really like... You can play it three if you want to. It breaks a little bit. I really just like being able to banish it once to add. And then one Hawk. In my opinion, Hawk was a lot better when we had Colossus. As of right now, it's just one extra extender that's searchable. It's really good. I don't really see the need to play it more than one, but still. This worked very well for me. I've been really liking how the deck's been working out with this kind of ratio. So then we can move on to the Chaos part of the deck. I play one Valkyria, one Wyvern Burster, and one Collapse Serpent. I love these cards. I use these over and over again. Just Chaos Space, search it, banish it, summon it, banish Chaos Space. I mean, you just, it's so recurrable. It's always a free two special summons. It's amazing. Chaos Valkyria, I actually did up using her Foolish Burial effect a lot, which if you banish her, you get to send any light or dark monster you want from the deck to the graveyard, which is insane in my opinion, and these cards are very cheap, so that's what I really liked about it. Then you got your big Chaos Boys here. I play one Levianir, one Eskatos, and one Chaos Crater. Now, all three of these did a lot of work for me. I really loved how you all know what Levianir does. You can pop things, you can summon things, and but these two... These are amazing cards. Now, this is where we get to see a Loof Lupine making a little bit more of... Uh, getting more importance with his beast typing. If I banish three different types from the graveyard with him, I can summon a free 3k beater that cannot be destroyed by card effects, and I can declare any type on the field, destroy all of that type, and your opponent cannot special summon them the next turn. So any deck you can think of that primarily summons one type of monster this deck just shut down. I played against several Eldritch decks I just called Zombie. They couldn't summon any of their trap cards. They couldn't summon back Golden Boy. Uh, I played against some Dinos. Can't summon any Dinos. You can't bring back UCT the next turn. It, it is just insane if you can bait out any negates and then summon him. And then Chaos Creator is amazing. If you, if you banish any part of your deck that you feel like you need back, you can just put it back in your deck or summon it with him. Any extra deck monster that they manage to get over, you can just banish it to summon any, any other chaos stuff, and then you can summon it right back or put it back in the extra deck. It is, this is the most recurrable deck I have ever played, without a doubt. Then, because we want to make this competitive, because we want to put it in a competitive format, and because I cannot afford Forbidden Drip, <laughs> Droplet, and Triple Tactics Talents, I play three Nibiru and three Phantasmae. And then, I know this is spells, but three Dark Ruler. These nine cards do so much for this deck. I, I Nibiru'd so many people. Dark Ruler helps me pop off with all my plays. And Phantasmate, I know with Master Rule 5, we thought we were going to see a lot less links. Every deck I played against, no matter what it was, had summon link monsters. And this is a dragon. This is a rock. It All of them help you summon Eskatos. This helps you fix your hand. I love it. I just absolutely love it. And this guy's this guy's pretty good against Striker too. And did, oh, it's you, did you face a lot of that on Saturday? I or? faced one Striker deck, and it was a very close match. But having Phantasme to just negate Widow Anchor, negate a Shark Cannon, just fantastic. I loved it a lot. Yeah, now that 
that actually helps me up quite a bit, especially if you're more of a budget player and you can't afford things like Triple Tackus Talents or Forbidden Droplet. Darkler No More, amazing budget alternative. Nibiru, not so budget anymore, but I know a lot of you still got it back in the day. Very good. When it, moving on to the spells, I played two Thunder Dragon Fusion and two Chaos Space. Thunder Dragon Fusion just so, so good. Every, I think every single duel I had, I had, thunder, whenever I had Thunder Dragon Fusion in the grave, you just banish Thunder Dragon Fusion the next turn, add Roar. Discard Roar, add Fusion, Fusion someone ever you want, and then you do it the next turn. You just keep summoning Titan over and over and over again, and some decks just can't compete with that recurability that you can summon your boss monster every single turn, no matter what they do to it. Another cool thing about this card is that um, you can also search uh, the Chaos Creator, right? Yes, it actually works. Because the Chaos Creator is a Thunder card, this doesn't have a stipulation that says Thunder Dragon. You can banish it to search any Thunder card. So I used it to search Chaos Creator a couple times, but when I don't need, uh, don't have that, I can use Chaos Space to search him. So Chaos Space searches any card in that Chaos Engine, except for Eskatos because his level's too high, but that's we play something for that uh, later, but... I use Chaos Space so much. On, oh my goodness. Like you just use it, you add white or black, and then whenever you have, are done using it, you banish it from the graveyard, put a Chaos Monster on the bottom of your deck, and then draw a card. It's a free draw. It's free two special summons. It's just an insane mm, card. Super broken. Super broken. <laughs> if, if I'm worried about any cards in this deck getting hit at some point, it's it's going to be Chaos Space or Wide Reverser and Collapse Serpent. Oh, they already got hit. They're not getting anymore. <laughs> uh, we've said that about other stuff. A leveler of darkness in this deck, you almost never have to send your hand to the graveyard. It is very good. And with the Thunder uh, Dragon monster effects, if you banish Dark or you banish Roar, it just pops off your whole combos. It's amazing. I play two Melody of Awakening Dragon. This is the card I used to search out Eskatos and Levineer, and it always was great when I when I came up with my hand. There's really not a lot of dead cards in this deck with having to discard cards for Chaos Space, with having to banish cards for Lure of Darkness, with having to uh, discard cards for Phantasmae. There's really not a whole lot of dead cards in this deck, which I really like. And then I run one Gold Sark and one Foolish Burial. This is amazing. Pretty standard in Thunder, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. So this is a 42-card build. You're more than welcome to cut whatever you want or add whatever you want. This is just what I use at our fairly competitive locals, and I got first place, and I, and I absolutely love playing it. Uh, moving on to the extra deck. I play two Titan. Uh, I know some Thunder Chaos builds play only one. I would not play it at less than two personally, because then you can't just constantly banish fusion, add roar, activate fusion, summon another titan, and then thunder to add thunder, pop, thunder to add thunder, pop, thunderhawk to summon something, pop. It just is so recurable and so amazing that I'd play it at three if I could, but I, I have this filled pretty much rock solid. Do you think do you think one of these days, <laughs> if Colossus ever comes back, it's going to be one of these, or are you going to keep the two Titan ratio? Oh, I have I have a card for you that I'm definitely going to replace if Colossus comes back, and this is it. I play a twin headed Thunder Dragon <laughs> for the, and it actually did come up. I I had one hand where I had to discard mm -hmm. Thunder to add Thunder, discard Thunder to add Thunder, activate Thunder Dragon Fusion, summon him, discard Thunder to add Thunders, plural. Banish one, banish him to summon a titan. It was yeah. ridiculously stupid, but it won me the game. Some hands you get with this deck are kind of weird, aren't they? I, it's There's so many different paths. That's what I love about this deck is it's not just like, oh, it's a one-card combo and you do the same thing every time. There's so many different things you can do, and they're usually really fun and really broken and unfair, and people get mad at you. But That's, it's that's what makes it a good Yu-Gi-Oh deck, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> And then uh, I do play a Super Poly Engine because I do side that. And since uh, Shadals are seeing a, a very big uh, importance right now, I, I, it actually did come up quite a bit. I sided it in quite a bit. It did really help. It did win me some games. I actually had, <laughs> had to Super Poly my own Underworld Goddess and their construct into a Mud Dragon to win. And it was, oh my God, it was stupid. I loved it. <laughs> I play one Cerberus, one Phoenix, and one Unicorn. Uh, these I, I just love the nightmare package. It can help you pop stuff when you need it. And I play this because I also play IP and just being able to go into it and spin, free spin, very good. And they're also fiends, which easy link twos, fiend, link them away, put them in the graveyard, summon yeah. Eskatos. Just it's just free stuff for it. I cannot get over how much I love Eskatos. Yeah. That that is one of the main reasons why I wanted to build this deck and play it, because it screws over so much mm. stuff. 
And if they do negate it, if they do to get rid of it, you just banish it and then you summon it with Chaos Crater or you banish it and you put it back in your deck with Chaos Space. I mean, it's, you can just keep summoning mm -hmm. the same stuff. It is hilarious. Now, do you, you don't have access code talker, do you? I do not. Okay. I don't run it in here. If, if you had it, would you play it instead of one of these other cards? <sighs> Probably, but I do like the big link, like the big links that I do play right now. But I, what I, uh, the reason I, I probably wouldn't actually is because with access code talker, the big thing is you banish other link monsters in your graveyard to use those effects. Oh, and you don't. And yeah. I like having those in my graveyard to banish for Eskatos, right. for Levianir, for Chaos Ruler. I, I just love having my graveyard full of monsters to banish mm -hmm. and pop off over and over and over and over again. Okay, well, show us some of your big link monsters here. Well, first of all, we have one more small package before we get to the big ones. We have one Link Reba, which is amazing with Matrix. You gotta play this because it lets you add the other Matrix. One Verte, not for Dragoon, for once. <laughs> it's amazing just to send a fusion to the graveyard and being able to banish the fusion to search anything you want the next turn. You get a free Titan, or you can use it for your Super Poly plays. I just, I love this card. It's amazing. I took Dragoon out because I swear to God, every single time I played that card, I drew Dark Magician or Black, Red Eyes Black Dragon in my opening five cards. Every single, I, I don't know, every single time. I play one IP. This is amazing. And I'll, I'll show an actual really cool thing I do with her. And Strike Your Dragon. I know it's at one. You don't use it for any rocket stuff. You just use it to link off your Wyvern and your Collapse to add the other Wyvern Collapse and get more extensions and more plays and more ridiculous bullshit. I love it. So now we have the big boys. We have Black Cluster Soldier Chaos. Very easy to make. Very easy to summon. And against decks like Sky Striker or other things, uh, Dinos, it's, it really shows its potential. Abramax, I love going... IP and Avermax, because then you have a non-targetable, non-destructible, non-battle-overable 3K monster, which is, I mean, I think it's ultra rare. It's only like three bucks. It's a very affordable, very good Link 4. And then I have my new favorite Link monster in the game, Underworld Goddess. This won me probably three or four, not like best two out of three, but three or four duels just herself, because I would... I'd just be summoning, summoning. You get so much free summons with this deck, and they're, like, waiting to negate something with their Dragoon. Uh, that's the one I'd use most. And then you're like, all right, uh, link my monsters, and because you can link one of your opponent's monsters, non-targeting, non-destructive, non-whatever, a way to summon her. And then when she is summoned, she skill drains all the other monsters on your opponent's field. Mm -hmm. and, and you can use IP Mascarina with it, which makes it really cool, too. Yep. So I can do that on my opponent's turn with my opponent's starter if I want to, and then I have a non-destructible... 3k link monster that skill drains every other monster they have on the field and i can negate one graveyard summon a turn quick effect so it's it's good against striker <sighs> that's for sure yes it is it's oh my god I, I used it again like so many decks are playing dragoon and then they sit on it they're like ha i have all these negates and i'm like okay are you gonna let me summon white you gonna let me summon black and they're like yeah yeah because they're not gonna negate something that's not gonna get rid of their board and then you get rid of dragoon and then they get all mad but Moving on to the side deck. So one card that I absolutely love to put in here, I haven't really used it much in past years, Chaos Hunter. We haven't seen a lot of this since Orcus, but against things like Tri-Brigade, tri Stuttering, Tri-Brigade, Dinos, Eldlich. I love citing this in for Eldlich. Any deck that really says, I need to banish to do things, Chaos Hunter says no. And not only does Chaos Hunter say no, you discard a card to summoner. More graveyard fodder for Chaos. It's a fiend more different types for Eskatos. It's level seven, more link fodder for Black Luster Soldier to get you non-targeting, non-destruction. It is just so good and so cheap that I just, I absolutely love putting them in the side deck. For the more back row heavy decks, I have one Harpy's Feather Duster, two twin. I assume lots of people will, will side in Artifact Lancia against me, so I tried to take out the Cosmic Cyclones for this exact reason. Plus, I get to I get another discard. I can put more stuff in Grave I can banish. So I really love discarding with this deck. It really does help you in the long run. You want as much stuff in your Grave as possible. You banish it all and you win the game. Uh, a deck that, uh, a card that I haven't played in a while, but I really liked uh, when I went to Locals on Saturday, Dimensional Barrier. I <laughs> played a uh, Invoked Shadal player and he was very upset when I went for a second game and played this because like you just call fusion and they can't summon Mechaba, they can't summon Winda, they can't summon Khan, they can't summon almost their entire extra deck except for what, Aramis and <sighs> Gravity Controller. Like it's, they play almost all fusions and I mean, 
<laughs> it's, mm. it's, it's hilarious to me. Uh, three Super Poly, also for Shadals, also for anything that you find that they play a couple Darks, they play a couple of Fusion Monsters. The Super Poly comes in very handy. I set it in quite a few times. And then also Infinite and Permanence. Now this is just because, since this is a going second build, is a going second build, it breaks boards, it pops off, it OTKs, unless you Dark Ruler. Uh, a lot of people make me go second when I go second or third game, and this is just another thing I can side in, because I side out my nine going second cards, Phantasme, Nibiru, Dark Ruler, and I have to have something to side in. So, oh, so you put that in going, going first? Yeah, if, oh, I, okay. if I know they're going to make me go first the next game, I want to have a free negate and spell trap shut off column. And it's, well, have you thought about anything like, like a Solemn Strike instead or... Any that's like definitely that. something that people can play if they want to if, if they feel like it's better i just like this because i like to stop combos uh mm -hmm. but i guess Psalm strike also does that yeah. so um so yeah, it's whatever you guys want to play hmm, okay crackdown's also a good one yeah, yeah I, I i guess like any, a good floodgate maybe too that'd be an interesting idea oh yeah i i actually toyed around with the idea of summon limit with this deck just because once you have the things you need engrave the next turn if you have a summon on the field you just Banish fusion, add roar, discard roar, add fusion, activate fusion, summon titan. And then you pop everything on their field, mm. and then maybe you want to summon a chaos monster. You don't, once you have that set up in your grave, which is extremely easy to do, pretty much after any turn with this deck, you'll have what you need in grave to summon titan the next turn, or a chaos the next turn. Uh, you could live under summon limit. Probably wouldn't put in there can be only one, probably wouldn't put in goes and match or yeah. rivalry, but... Some limit you could live under, honestly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what, what was your uh, what was your easiest matchup you played against over the last weekend? Well, the easiest one was a uh, sixty card going second dark magician, but he did he could summon dragoon every turn, so that was it was better than I expected going into it. But that was probably my easiest matchup. The three hardest were definitely tri brigade. Invoke should all and Sky Striker just because yeah. of the Sky Striker player. Decks. Yeah, and well, the Sky Striker player is really good too. Yeah, yeah. The Sky Striker player Oracles is like ridiculously good. Mm -hmm. But I played against a really good uh, Scrap Dino deck that could end on Borlode Savage, Appaloosa, UCT, and Dragoon fairly easily. Mm -hmm. So don't you just love the sound of that? Dark Ruler, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> which is why, which is why I main deck that. A lot of people side deck it in this meta. It's so good. If if you're doing a going second deck, I heavily encourage you to main deck dark ruler it's won me so many games it's so it's yeah. so fun i mean it sucks and they look at you like they're gonna stab you in the parking lot it's still fun for me <laughs> yeah I, I mean we don't have any drytron at, at our locals do we so. uh we did and they uh, that guy stopped playing it thank god oh, so. okay yeah i mean it's good against that deck too it's just like yeah it, it, dark ruler is so good right now uh, it's it's it's, it's yeah. fantastic because then you only have to deal with herald of the orange light in their hand and, right and, yeah, and you, this deck you can, can play, play through, through that stuff. This deck uh, honestly can play through a lot because I know everyone says, like, oh, if you don't draw Dark Ruler, you don't draw Nibiru, you're going to lose. Uh, I played against several four or five negate boards without Dark Ruler Nibiru, but then uh, Thunder Effect to do Thunder Effect. Okay. Aloof Effect. Okay. Melody. Okay. And then once they're out of negates, I still have at least one or two things I can do. And even if they negated, something goes to my grave, and I ended up being able to play through for the next turn. Mm. I get, against one deck everything got negated but because he still had to discard for cost for half the stuff I had three different types engraved and I just summoned Eskatos, Eskatos and I wiped their board and they're like huh. really and I'm like, that's funny yeah that's that's a that's a good card it's searchable it, by melody and it's it's it, easy to it's summon so good like I, I wish I could play Protoss in here too but that requires three different attributes and I'd literally have to send uh, yeah, Soldier like of Chaos or, or Nightmare Phoenix. Yeah. Everything else is light or dark, so it's it's a lot mm -hmm. harder to summon for this deck specifically. But if you do have a deck that has three different attributes in it fairly easily, I would heavily recommend the Arch Nemesis, Protoss, and Eskatos cards. They are fantastic. I think Eskatos is a bit better. Yeah, it's definitely better right now. That's right for now. sure. Uh, I, I think it's. I mean, it most it, most of the time it's better. It's a little bit weird against I would say Tri Brigade because they play all sorts of types and attributes. Wing beast, beast, all yeah. that. But you hit one out of three, you're probably you're probably doing okay. Oh yeah. All right. Do you have anything else to say about this deck, Connor? It's probably my favorite deck I've ever played. I really love Thunder Dragons, so I, I try to spend a lot of the time building a deck that would be competitive because I miss being competitive with Thunder Dragons, and I, I think I'm going to stick with this a long time until they ban chaos space or something then i have to start over but if you like thunder dragons if you like going second if you like the chaos engine which i love it this is a fantastic deck to try and if you and if you get 
A lot of these have common prints, and a lot of those secret rares aren't expensive. I'd say pretty much everything except for Blackluster Soldier of Chaos, IP. Underworld's only like 18, but the rest of the deck is actually, oh, Verte Anaconda, if you haven't picked that up yet, it's like 45. Other than that, the rest of the deck is actually very affordable. I cannot think, Chaos Crater. Chaos Crater is actually like 22. Other than that, I think this is a very That's competitive, affordable deck because you don't have to play Chaos Creator. It's just a little extra spice. Mm -hmm. I'd definitely play Eskatos, but that's only $4. So, I mean, it's... I really love it. I'd encourage you to at least try it online, see if see if it fits your play style. And if it does, I'd try it at your locals. It is super fun. I'll give you that. Well, <laughs> uh, congratulations on your locals victory, Connor, and thank you for the deck profile. Thank you very much. All right, YouTube, this is Team Blacktop signing off. Thank you so much for watching.